Hey guys, Wave618 here. It is the 15th of January 2020. So we're going to do an update on Bitcoin today. And in this video, I'm very happy to be adding some positive sentiment in this video. Reason being is we've seen that key show of strength that we've been waiting for. I've mentioned time and time again throughout this downward correction phase that we're seeing that I've been waiting for price to push above this upper median line. So I mentioned in order for me to bullish, I need to see that this is about to happen. And finally, we are seeing that materialize. So I'm, yeah, as I say, I'm very happy to shine a positive light on Bitcoin today. There is some promise in that this could be a significant swing low here. So in today's video, what we're going to discuss is, is this a major swing low? What are the reasons supporting that? And on top of that, how can we get confirmation that this is a major swing low? Because obviously there is always that risk that we come down further. And I'll explain what the key levels we need to see overcome to try and differentiate whether this is long term bullish or bearish. So, um, yeah, so very happy to be shedding this more positive view on on, uh, on Bitcoin today. So, um, yeah, if interested then stay tuned. All right, guys, so it's good to be back updating you guys. Um, yeah, so really interesting video we're going to be doing today. Um, before I just jump into this uh, Bitcoin chart, I will quickly mention that, uh, yeah, we will be doing a 50% discount for the first month on the Cryptology Group. So if you are interested in that, the website is wave618.com. This is the website here. You'll find access to Cryptology which is priced at £50 a month. As I say, I'm offering this discount, which will be within the description of this video at half price for the first month. Um, here you've got my course, which every month there's always three uh, places for a 50% discount. I think at the moment there's a there's one place remaining, if I remember correctly. Um, but yeah, the Cryptology includes the course, but only while subscribed. And the modules are released uh, over the course of three months. So, uh, yeah, opportunities there. If you want information on what's included in the course, uh, check it out. Either one of these will tell you what's in the um, covered in the curriculum. But basically, it covers everything I've learned in trading. So the offers there, if you're interested, check out the description to this video if interested. All right. With that said, let's jump into this very important update on Bitcoin. So basically, as you all know, I've been monitoring this pitchfork really, really closely, and we've never really seen a convincing move above this upper median line. And I've said this is what I would want to see to confirm that we are switching from a downtrend to an uptrend. OK, so we're finally seeing it. But obviously, the major question now is, is this the, our first major wave down? We're seeing a correction of that and then we're going to push down further. That is obviously the risk at, in play. And I'll mention, I'll explain what my views are on that. I'll say up front now, my bias is bullish. Yeah. Okay. And I'll be justifying my reasons for that throughout the video. So my bias is that this is a major swing low, but I'll be mentioning the cautions that we have to look out for and the key price levels we need to overcome to help confirm the probability that it, this is our major swing low. Okay, now first of all, as you'll all know, my major count is that this 20k top was a, um, a wave three high. And since then, everything that we're seeing is a wave four. Um, I think it was around May last year, I did my long term view on Bitcoin talking about it potentially going to 350k. And in that video, I talked about the wave four finishing here. Okay, I then changed my view, because in my opinion, although this went up very quickly, I did not have it as an impulsive count. And uh, I've explained that in previous videos, so I won't go into it too much in this video. But for me, this was corrective. There is a corrective count for it. Although it's an extended corrective count, uh, I do favor it more so as being corrective. It followed a corrective pitchfork. And um, 
yeah, the uh, the Fibs supported that, and also going across the rest of crypto, they all formed this corrective move through the first half of 2019. Okay, but we're not going to dwell on that too much. But with that said, if this is our wave four, um, rather than it finishing here, I believe it's still forming, it's still completing a larger wave four. And I suppose a reason that supports that is bringing up volume. We have seen a descending. Uh, profile in volume that has continued you know if this was our if this was the end of wave four and this was going into wave five you'd expect the volume for this to be much greater okay basically since we've seen our 20k high volume has just been on uh, so volume has just been on the decline and I still think as I say that we're still within this wave four I've got it as a major triangle that's playing out and so I do expect the volume to continue this declining profile until we break out to see our wave five. Um, so, yeah, in terms of the triangle I'm looking at, there's two playouts. There's the ascending triangle versus the symmetrical triangle. And personally, I think it's more likely to be a symmetrical triangle. And I'll put on the labels for that. So that's our A wave. That's our B in here. We can now call this our C. Um, and then we're looking to make a D and an E before going higher. Um, it's a lot better to look at it on the linear scale where we can see basically if we use our, let's take off volume for a moment now. What we can see is, so if we do a fib retracement of this move here, you can see we come up to the 0.786, so a nice place to find uh, a reversal for a correction and then this move up if we do a fib retracement tool we have come down and we've hit the 0.5 level again a very nice place for a corrective count to make a reversal okay and um, yeah so the other thing was we've got this very nice order block here so this was basically using the where the majority of this price action was here this range here so this was the top this was the bottom and yeah so what did price do so it used it as very nice support on the weekly time frame never really got a close below we came down tested it once tested it twice and then we've shot higher okay um okay so we've got that order block in that offers support there on top of that i've mentioned time and time again that december is off december slash january is often uh where we see swings in price if you look across the whole history of Bitcoin going across the last decade in price action, you will note that, in fact, let me just quickly show you. If we look at the BLX chart, I've shown it here. So the dotted vertical lines are basically our December months. And you can see, looking here, we often see a trend from December to December. Okay, so here obviously was our 20K high. When did it happen? December came down. How far? When did it turn around? It was December. And again, we're, we're back in December now, so I wouldn't be too surprised for us to have that run up. We are going into the halving in May uh, of this year. So again, another argument for why we can see pr um, uh, a reduction in supply and as a result, price going up. Um, yeah, again, another December month with a high here, a December low here. Um, so yeah, we, we see it time and time again. Yeah, so it's not a bad shout to look out for a possible swing um, low or high when December arrives. So that's just looking at the a bit of time there. So back to our bitstamp chart. So as I say, I've been looking at this as a symmetrical triangle, the A, B, C, D, and E. Um, now, yeah, the other argument is the ascending triangle. And the argument for that is that this is an A, B wave would come up which is not yet finished. So this is basically first leg of B, second leg of B, third leg, leg of B, then C comes across, then you've got your D and your E. But for me, this is getting way too drawn out, way too long for, for this wave four relative to the preceding wave two that we saw. It's getting way too drawn out. And that's why I think more likely we're gonna see this symmetrical triangle where we've got our C wave finish potentially here at 6,400. Um, we're forming our D wave, and for that reason, we're still on low volume overall. So this triangle explains why the volume is still low. Those people who th think we're in some major impulse from here, 
Uh, the reason, I mean, my explanation for why we're not seeing that major volume is because it's all part of a big triangle. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I'm leaning towards the symmetrical triangle for this bullish move. Um, all right. And those people who are, and to be honest, either way you look at it, whether it's uh, this was the end of the wave four. So obviously I'm saying this is one major wave four forming a symmetrical triangle. There are those people who say that this was the end of a wave four. This was in fact impulsive. And then, so this was an impulsive wave one of five. This is your wave two of five and we're going into wave three of five. Obviously anyone who's looking at it that way is anticipating a wave three or five now which you would expect high volume and it to go absolutely berserk to the upside. Okay. Personally, I don't think it's going to be like that. I think it's going to be a lot more slow, uh, looking a bit corrective, then come down again, going very much consolidating before eventually shooting to the upside. That's what I'm expecting. Um, and I think the low volume profiles at present uh, support that argument. So, okay. Now, so this is the bullish view really that I have. And I've mentioned, obviously, for me to have this bullish view, I wanted to see us get above the upper median line. Now, I would like to address what I mentioned in my last video. So in my last video, that was a couple of weeks back, just before the uh, the new year. And I explained how I was looking out at the yearly close, the 2019 close, and the key things I was looking out for. So chiefly, it was the 50-week uh, the simple moving average, which has acted as tremendous support and resistance in the past. Um, so I was paying close attention to that. So let's just pull up the 50 week simple moving average. Let's take off the 200 and the 100, which aren't as significant at present. Uh, the, I've left the 20 on, which is our green line, blue lines are 50. I've left 20 on because that also has been a good marker of trend uh, in the past. So I've left that on. Now I did, I was a little bit concerned with us being beneath this 50 week simple moving average we had a, a candle close beneath here and another candle close another candle close so three weekly candles closes beneath the 50 week simple moving average and then we've seen a big turnaround we've gone back up so actually this is obviously pointing in favor of the the bulls now although this uh, the 50 week simple moving average didn't act as wonderful support because it was overshot with several candles um, beneath uh, the, the moving average it has actually uh, subsequently moved up quite dramatically okay so that is a, si a sign of strength in my eyes and not only that it's made its way above the 20 which you can see it had trouble with here uh, so we're now getting above the 20. so the other thing i wanted to mention or well that i did mention in my last video was the camarilla pivots and so on the weekly time frame Let's just tidy up the chart. So taking off all the other annotations. Now we've just got our Camarilla pivots on here. So here you can see Camarilla pivots on the weekly time frame have been significant in the past. So S4 held price up nicely here. Didn't manage to close the year beneath. And so that was a show of strength that this S4 was going to have to support. Subsequently, we went up throughout the following year. How high did we go up? We went up to the S4, never got a weekly candle uh, close above. And as a result, we've came down to our R3 and the close of the year actually it was this candle that caused me concern yeah because this was um, basically the last weekly close before the end of the year but some people do argue that this final candle that is basically in between this year and the next year can be used to determine whether this year was strong or weak and actually this candle finished above the R3. Strictly speaking, it should be this candle that's used, but I'm just trying to try and put all of this together. And for me, I think there's a good argument that this is a show of strength here. This candle really shooting up dramatically. But I do think we do need to have a level of caution at the R3. If, as I say, there is that possibility price could still roll over, I think the likelihood of that is very small. Not very small, but certainly less likely um but 10k is a level that i've got my eyes on um that is a level that we need to overcome in my eyes um once we do there's a very good shout we make it to the r4 and then at r4 just from an elliott wave point of view i can't really see it rolling over from there i see it going higher 
with our next target being the all-time highs of 20k. Okay, so really it's the R3 from a Camarilla point of view that could offer any major significant resistance and that sits at 10k. So that's why I've got my eyes very closely watching uh, that 10k mark. All right, just on the subject of Camarillas before we move away, you can see on the daily time frame, just check out here how well they've uh, held price. So it was the S3 and S4s that are significant, as well as the R3 and R4s, but in a downtrend, it's the S3 and S4 where you look for support. You can see here, so here, each range here is for one month. When you're on the daily time frame, each range is one month. And you can see here, we test the S3, we then... Um, fail to come beneath it for the monthly close and we make our way up to the R4. We then roll over again um, using the R3 as a ceiling this time. Where do we come down to the S4? And then again using the S4, S3 here as the floor. Where do we shoot up to the R4? Then we actually come down and there's a suggestion that we're going to come down hard here because we come beneath the S4 which can suggest we're going into a major downtrend but the monthly close is actually above the S4 showing a degree of strength and then we test the s3 again very close to the s3 and now this here is the very key show of strength not once during this whole move down have we got above the r4 okay now we've got candle closes several candle closes above the r4 we did have a little bit of a blip where we came back beneath and then we shot up very nicely using this r4 as support so this often suggests that we're going into a trend to the upside. So from a Camarilla point of view, this is now uh, showing strength. Okay, so it's another indicator why I'm in favor of the bullish move right now. Um, okay, now we want to mention what are the things to look out for with it potentially rolling over. So here I want to look at horizontal levels. Now I want to show you how, let's take off the Camarilla a moment back here this following our mount gox crash so you can see we had our initial correction here and then we saw our bounce and i just want to show you how if we put our horizontal level here we really struggle this is where our candle closes are on the weekly time frame and we struggle really to to get when we do come down and we see that bit of a bounce which turns out to be a dead cat bounce it really struggles with that previous significant horizontal level and that is where we roll over using a fib retracement to see how much it retraced you can see it retraced to the 50 percent level okay so just keeping that in mind those fib retracement levels and the significant horizontal levels to look out for what i would be looking out for here again weekly time frame um, for me very clear level to keep our eyes on is 9500 so i'm just going to plot it right there so you can see very nicely, candle closes here, time and time again, it's acting as support. No candles beneath, no candle closes beneath. Eventually we break, and when it breaks, it breaks dramatically, telling you that this is a significant level. When it retraces, it, again, no candle closes above 9,500, okay? We've then gone down and we're coming back to 9,500, okay? So this is a, the key level that I'm looking at. And because this is a very key level where there is the argument that it could then roll over just like it did in 2013. Um, the, yeah, there's the argument that it could still roll over until it gets above 9,500. I'd say right now, as I say, my bias is that this is bullish and this is a major swing low. I'd say that from a percentage point of view, I'm probably 65% bullish right now. But with it getting above 9,500, and it's seeing a nice weekly close above it, I'd probably switch that to 85%. But then again, maybe 10K, getting above 10K, then I'd switch to 85% uh, likelihood of it being bullish. So, <clears throat> um, yeah, because that Camarilla pivot level that I mentioned on the weekly time frame is at sitting at 10K, so that is a significant level. But from a horizontal level point of view here, as you can see, 9.5K, is a very significant level I want to see overcome. Also, we've got our upper warning line, which kind of sits close to that level also. So it'd be good to see price get above that. So I've mentioned the on the higher time frames now that I do think that this is a major swing low. I think it's this is your A wave, this is your B, this is your C, and we're going into our D wave, and then we may see an 
E-wave come back down, test 9.5K 9 before then going into our major fifth wave. That is what I'm looking at uh, for the price action at this moment in time. Um, from a shorter time frame point of view, um, is it worth jumping in at this, this moment? In my opinion, probably not, just because we're very close to that 9.5K level. Okay, I want to see our price response to that level. I did mention to the group how when we came up to this upper median line, there was obviously the possibility of us rolling over because it's done that time and time again throughout this uh, downward move. But basically we started to consolidate here and it was during this phase that it was consolidating that I alerted the group saying this is a good suggestion that this is accumulation underneath resistance and that we're going to push higher. Subsequently we have pushed higher and this is our key show of strength that I wanted to see to suggest that this downtrend was ending and that's why here within this consolidation phase there was a good long opportunity. Obviously your stop would have to be quite wide maybe beneath your previous uh, um, higher low at around 7k but as I say, we're, we're targeting uh, at least all time highs, so it's not a bad risk reward. Um, so, yeah, at the moment, I see 9.5K is offering a bit of resistance, so I wouldn't just jump in at this moment. And other reasons that I wouldn't jump in, if we take a look at a few altcoins, if we take a look at Ripple, so Ripple is sat at, so let's go on the daily, uh, very key horizontal resistance at the moment at 24 cents. Yeah, so that was a very key level. You can see this major swing at 24 cents here. It acted as multiple levels of uh, support and resistance also within this range. Uh, again, tested here several times, and now it's acting as resistance. So you want to see Ripple get above 0 0.24 uh, dollars. Uh, also, Ethereum is another one sat at major resistance. So 165 dollars is a major, major level on Ethereum with, you can see, looking at this level going across so I think if we zoom in you can see we only really get a bit of a wick to the downside beneath it here coming across key support uh, turning into resistance resistance and then support coming across here finally we get beneath it and now it's acting as resi um, resistance which I think is probably going to be temporary when we push higher but there's the argument we could see a little bit of consolidation before it pushes higher especially considering we've got the upper warning line of this downward pitchfork that I've been watching also uh, this pitchfork has been pretty good. The median line tested three times here before we then pushed up, test the upper median line, and then make our way to the upper warning line. So it is a key pitchfork that I've got my eyes on. And yeah, until we get above this upper warning line and this horizontal level, uh, this is at the moment resistance. So yeah, that's Ethereum Ripple BSV. Obviously, everyone was amazed by the move. Um, so the way I've been looking at it, this was our five wave count up to here. This is your three wave correction. So you can draw on your pivot, uh, your pitchfork. The modified shift was holding price best. So you got your first pivot, second pivot, and third pivot. Since those those pivots were in, very nicely we made our way up to the median line, got rejected. How far did we come down? Came down to the lower median line. We then shot up again very nicely to the median line very temporary uh, resistance before making our way to the upper median line and now we're beneath the upper median line again that it could offer some temporary resistance though ultimately i do think we're going to uh, make our way to the upper warning line eventually um, and yeah bsv actually gave us some signs that uh, crypto was going to follow suit and break to the upside um, which i did alert the group to also saying that you know it could be leading uh, the pack really. Um, so if we just take a look at a key pitchfork I was monitoring, which was, yeah, this pitchfork. So let's just minimize that. So this pitchfork here, I don't think I need to justify how significant this pitchfork is. You can see how price is respecting the levels here. So basically, we're just using the first um, three swings here. So first pivot, second pivot, third pivot, we range between the median line and upper median line. We come down to the lower median line. And then when we find support, we come up to the upper warning line, has trouble on a number of occasions getting above, it comes down to the lower median line, and then it finally gets above the upper warning line. Yeah, and I think it was at this point, I mentioned that basically all of crypto was held very nicely within its downward pitchforks, except BSV. And because uh, Bitcoin was consolidating beneath that key upper median line 
I was saying maybe BSV is leading the pack and it's telling us the future direction. So, and then suddenly it's absolutely gone berserk since coming out of this pitchfork. So again, it's illustrating here the how useful these pitchforks can be. You know, they really hold on to trend. Once you get a breakout, it's basically telling you, you know, we're switching direction. Uh, another reason, another sign that crypto was bullish is looking at, let me just pull up another chart. So I mentioned, I can't remember, it's been a while now, but I mentioned the only chart that I can see some degree of correlation with Bitcoin is uh, with uh, weed stocks, basically. So this is Canopy uh, Growth Corporation, which is a great benchmark for uh, marijuana prices. And basically, obviously, we've got a dramatic move up here. Then I've been looking at this corrective move. And the way I've been looking at it is this ABC correction. Uh, here's your pitchforks, a shift pitchfork, first pivot, second pivot, third pivot. And we came down really, really nicely, hitting our um, lower warning line and then finding support. On top of that, you've got horizontal support using this uh, swing high here. A little bit of a range also offering a bit of support here. And then... Uh, yeah, since hitting this uh, lower warning line of this pitchfork, we bounce as high as the lower median line, consolidate, and then we push higher. This is suggesting that this wants to push higher also. And on top of that, there's this shorter time frame pitchfork, looking at the C wave of this ABC correction. Um, and you can see it was here at this point that we broke out of that downward pitchfork, again, telling you that we're going into an uptrend. And you can see this happened way before crypto started to move forward so this was kind of showing signs and this is why i like to use correlating charts to try and determine the long-term view on um, on an asset so yeah these are the the bullish arguments right now but as i say we do have to exercise caution until we get above let's pull up bitcoin until we get above 9.5k another reason we might see a slight bit of resistance at this point is if we pull on the 1.5 line of this downward pitchfork you can see we're currently sat bang on at the 1.5 line right here yeah so it's not usually a line I have on my pitchforks as a default but it's always having worth having a look if other charts are also at resistance levels it can explain why you're seeing a bit of resistance on this chart and obviously we're looking to get above this upper median line that would suggest that we're then on our journey towards the 9.5k, which I can't see it just breaking through dramatically. I would expect a little bit of a um, consolidation at least. Um, and th that is what I'll be looking at very, very closely because a nice consolidation beneath this 9.5k, you know, a nice regular um, zigzag correction or even a triangle would be a very good uh, potential long position that I'll be looking out for so that's my long-term bias those are the arguments for this being a major swing low um, these my this is the cautionary level 9.5k i wouldn't be jumping in at this point as i say the risk reward is small with 9.5k being very close this was a place to get in in my eyes and um, yeah we'll have to see how it plays out until we get above here there is the argument we roll over um, and so 9.5 to 10k is the is the region that I want to see price get above. So I'm hoping that wraps up all of my views on Bitcoin at this moment in time. Um, yeah, as always, feel free to ask questions within the comments. Uh, if you found value in this video, then leave a like. Um, don't forget, I'm doing that discount on the first month of my Cryptology group. So it is, it is cheap and uh, I do it because it's to give you a taste a month of what to expect from the course. Obviously, you don't know what you're signing up to until you've really got a, a taste for it. Obviously, you can cancel at any time. So yeah, the offer's there. Uh, obviously, the, the course is there if you want a lifetime access to a course instead. Um, so yeah, I think we're gonna wrap it up there, guys. So really interesting price action that we've seen here in Bitcoin. Let's see, are we seeing a major turnaround? We're going to find out in the next couple of weeks. All right, guys, let's wrap it up. Take care.